That's why I started teaching, because I think the answer to the question are all of these technologies and networks beneficial for us as individuals, as citizens, for our relationships, our communities, our, our society. I believe the answer is it really depends on what people do with the tools and that in turn depends on, on what they know. That in fact it wasn't the printing press that created democracy or, or science or the Protestant Reformation. It was the literate population that was now possible. 20,000 books written by hand during Gutenberg's lifetime. 20 million books published in Europe within 50 years of his invention. So some, you know, a similar kind of scale. Suddenly a, a lot of people had access to a means of knowledge and, and influence that they had not had before. And it took a while for those literacies to change political governance, to change the way we gathered knowledge, um, but they wouldn't have been possible without the technology. So I think a lot of people kind of think about the technology doing something, but it's really the technology making something possible. And in that realm of possibility, people can know or, or not know, or act ignorantly or act in an informed manner or act and, and have their actions turn out disastrously. So I'm a big believer in human agency in this technological equation. So where do you intervene in that kind of system? Um, this is a worldwide event, even if you had a government. I guess the Chinese government is the biggest example that, that really wanted to control it. It's, it's really very, very difficult to do. It, it, it has to be, the education uh, has to be the, the intervention. That, whether that education takes place in schools or elsewhere is an, another question, but I think what people know about how to use these tools is critically important. Just the existence of the technology itself does not mean that democracies will get more democratic or people's lives will get any richer, except for a few people. Or that power will be distributed in any different way than it already is. Well, you know, there's our I think a number of, of fairly easy things that you can do behind which is I think a much larger change in attitude about being critical towards media of all kinds in general. When you find something online, does it have an author? Put that author's name in the search engine and see what, what others say about it. Are there sources listed? If so, what do others say about those sources? Are, if there's no author and there's no sources, what does that mean? Um, who, who might be profiting from this is always a good question to ask. What's the point of view behind this? Those are all questions that you used to, that the brand of the newspaper or the television station or radio network, that you know what, what they stood for. Uh, you knew that more or less they did their fact-checking. Now, as the consumer of news, it's really up to you to do what you had expected the publisher to do before. In many ways, you have to take a critical attitude towards information. So how did that? Reputation has to do with a lot. There are a few people, our friend Francis Pisani, I think if he said something was a credible source because of my trust and knowledge of, of his judgment, that would mean something to me. So I think we need to develop means of separating the, the bad information from the good information. It's probably the most important thing other than freedom that citizen journalism needs. Uni universities are, are thousand year old institutions that go back to when books were so valuable they were chained to podiums and reading was difficult before punctuation was invented so for some old expert stood up and read while the students sat down and listened and now uh, all of the knowledge of the world is in the air and they uh, have access to it while they're sitting there and you're talking to them so it's one of the, the other reasons i'm in education now is because I mean, there's a tremendous opportunity for the media to enable a, a a wonderfully collaborative 
inquiry using all of this knowledge that's in the air, you can only find the stuff that's, that's true, um, instead of only relying on some old guy standing up in front of a lecture hall and talking to you and you taking notes and regurgitating that for a test. So I think that there's a, a whole new way of participating in education that's coming along.